Hello everyone, the topic that we will discuss today in this video that is criminal law. Okay. So let's begin with the what are the major key terms that we will discuss in this video. The first one that we will discuss that is what is the meaning of crime. Secondly, I will discuss what are the different categories of crime. Thirdly, I will discuss what are the stages of crime. Fourthly, I will discuss what are the elements of crime. And lastly, I will discuss what is difference between intention and motive. So, let's begin with the first topic that is meaning of crime. So, what is crime? What first come in your mind when you hear this word crime? It is something that not allowed to do. It is something that punishable. It is something that people avoid to discuss okay so this is a sort of act that may affect others interest or even own interest so if the act that affect someone's interest or own interest in some negative way so that is crime so, let's check out the legal definition what actually crime is. The act which is prohibited by the state or law. And then if someone does is known as crime. So, the kind of act that is prohibited by a state or law, even then someone does that, that is crime because it is punishable by the law or by the state okay and the body of rules that punishes criminals is known as criminal law of course so simple so now let's come on the second topic that is what are the different categories of crime Depending on the crime actually committed against whom, against what, based on this, crime can be categorized as crime against person. The crime committed against a person such as murder, assault, hurt, kidnapping, abduction, etc. The second one is crime against property the crime committed against the property such as dacoity robbery burglary theft larceny etc all these are the crime that is against the property whether it is movable property or immovable property next one is crime against public order the crime committed against the public order such as rights, arson, etc. So these are known as crime against public order. Next one is crime against economic interest. So that is the crime committed against the economic interest such as criminal breach of trust, cheating, counterfeiting, etc. Next one is crime against women. It includes rape, dowry death, cruelty, etc. And the last one is crime against children. Child rape, kidnapping and abduction of children, procuration of minor girls, selling and buying of girls for prostitution, abetment of suicide, exposure and abandonment, infanticide and feticide all these are categorized as crime against children 
Now I will discuss some of the another categories of crime such as white collar crime. The kind of crime committed by officers and other white collar employees is known as white collar crime such as corruption, embezzlement etc. Next one is organized crime. The crime committed by structured groups typically involving the distribution of illegal goods and services to others such as illegal gambling, weapons smuggling, money laundering, hawala transactions etc. And the last one in this category is crime against morality. There are certain types of crimes that substantially do not harm or cause injury to any person or property but such acts are deemed as immoral activities such as prostitution, illegal drug use etc. Now the next topic that I have that is what are the stages of crime though some crimes are instantaneous for which no planning is done but Largely, the crime which has been planned and then executed, it has following four categories. The first one is intention, essentially required. The second one is preparation. Okay. The third one is attempt and the last one is that is commission. So there are four stages of crime. As you can see on the screen that intention. So primarily your intention is essentially required. So you have the intention to do something wrong, to do something illegal. So the, if that intention has came into your mind, now you start preparing for that in order to execute that. Once you prepare, then you attempt. And once you attempt, you commissioned or execute that act or action. So likewise, there are four steps. Okay, so better understanding. Let's discuss it with an example. Suppose A fought with B. In spite of the fact that A was innocent, he was very peaceful and calm person, but unnecessarily B beaten him. Okay? And then A felt insulted because he was beaten publicly. And hence, he thought to kill B. So now the intention developed to kill B. So now what A will do once intention came in mind then what he will do? He will start preparing for that. He will start monitoring B's routine so that he can kill him at the right time at right place so that he can also protect himself. So he has start preparing the things in terms of monitoring B, in terms of arranging the weapon and all the things. And then once he prepared everything then he will attempt and then if he succeed then crime is committed. committed. Okay. So that is the four stages of crime. Okay. The first two stages, namely intention and preparation, do not come under the category of crime until the third one initiated, that is attempt. So see, if something going on inside your mind, of course there is no law that can punish for that because it cannot be proved. The second one that is preparation. So if you are doing something until unless it is substantial or perceptive you are buying some illegal weapon and all then that is another issue. 
otherwise if you are doing something maybe buying some rope and some knife that is of course you can buy hai na so if you are doing such kind of preparation even then it is not a crime but yes if you are preparing to murder someone by buying illegal weapon pistol then that is again crime okay only buying illegal weapon okay so that is the intention and preparation so criminal liability arises only when the crime has reached the third stage which is gone beyond preparation and has entered into the domain of attempt okay so that is the stages of crime now i have the next topic that is what are the elements of crime crime said to be committed only when two elements are present namely mens rea that is guilty mind and actus reus or actus rea that is bad action okay the principles of actus reus and mens rea are embedded in a latin maxim which is read as actus non facit reum nisi mens sit rea the meaning of this latin maxim is an act doesn't make one guilty unless the mind is also legally blame worthy so all crimes have a physical element and a mental element usually called actus reus and mens rea respectively let us understand it with an example a invited b on his shooting ground he was shooting with duplicate bullets and all and firing on some bottle and ball so that he was practicing of shooting but when a invited b and b came there for shooting purpose because it was known to a that b is very much passionate about the shooting and he is very nice shooter as well so he wanted to take undue advantage of this so he asked him to shoot a ball the ball is kept in a such a way that behind that there was a person and a actually wanted to kill that person through b and b oblivious of this fact means not known to him that what he is going to do he pick up the gun and and fired on the ball behind the ball there was a person he died so in this case what happened actus rea is there because b did it b committed a crime he murdered someone but there was no mens rea isn't it because he didn't know that what he is going to do so in this case a will be responsible of that murder because he had the bad intention guilty mind mens rea though actus rea wasn't present in case of a but actus rea was present in the form of b okay and mens rea of course it is of a so it is mixed mens rea and actus rea mixed so one who commanded the things one who given the instruction so he will be responsible not b okay so this is how actus rea and mens rea work furthermore we discuss actus rea that is the word actus connotes a deed which is a physical result of human conduct and the word reus means forbidden by law so the action the deed which is prohibited by the law that is actus reus in common parlance means a guilty act very simple now i have very important question and it is also very interesting that is does an act 
in actus reus include omissions okay it is interesting because actus reus it's guilty action but in crime when something is committed that is commissioned or even omissioned even then that is crime so if something is omissioned then will that be also considered as crime interesting no let's check it out an omission is nothing but inaction or not doing something section 32 of the indian penal code clarifies that acts which may be considered as crime include illegal omission so it is a crime keep in mind but mere moral omissions of not doing something wouldn't complete the requirement of actus reus so what does it mean that if you have to do something more means it is your moral duty to do something to help someone and you didn't do that in that case law won't to be accuse you as a criminal but yes if it is your duty to protect someone and you didn't do that then it is crime for example see being a common man you are passing through a road and what you have seen that a very big person maybe of 6 feet height and he was beating badly to a boy you know that you are powerful enough to control that to save that boy to protect that boy you can protect because you have this much power maybe you have certain things some techniques or martial art or anything of like that you know it very well so it is your moral duty to protect that boy if you protect it fine but if you didn't that is omission of your moral duty in this case it is not a crime but in the same situation if you are a police officer and something wrong is happening in front of you in spite of the fact that you know that the person who is beating that boy is much powerful than you okay and you cannot protect him but you didn't attempt to protect in this case whether you can protect him successfully whether you can save him successfully or not that is not the question the question is you didn't attempt to protect him because it was your duty in that case it is a crime okay so this is how it is defined now the next point we have that is mens rea that is guilty mind intent and it is also known as ill intention the mens rea constitutes of there must be a mind at fault intention to constitute a crime okay the act becomes criminal when the actors do it with a guilty mind okay so i believe this is very simple that you can understand okay so in india the word mens rea as such is not defined in the ipc but its essence is reflected in almost all the provisions of the code for framing a charge for an offense under the ipc the traditional rule of existence of mens rea is to be followed this rule has been reiterated by the supreme court of india in a state of maharashtra versus mayor hans george it was held in this case that mens rea by necessary implication can be excluded from a statute only where it is absolutely clear that the implementation of the object of a statute would 
otherwise be defeated and its exclusion enables those put under strict liability by their act or omission to assist the promotion of the law. Further, in Kartar Singh versus the state of Punjab, the Supreme Court held that the element of mens rea must be read into a, a statutory penal provision unless a, a statute either expressly or by necessary implication rules it out. So, in both the cases we have seen that though in the in IPC it is not defined but over period in time this term is frequently used in different cases. Okay. Now we have another beautiful term that we have already discussed while discussing tort law but the same thing I will also discuss in the criminal law that is a strict liability. In criminal law the strict liability is liability for which mens rea doesn't have to be proven in relation to one or more elements comprising the actus reus, although intention, recklessness or knowledge may be required in relation to other elements of the offense. Okay, first you try to remember the concept of a strict liability when we were discussing the concept of a strict liability while studying the tort law. Even there what we have discussed that even in a condition when a person is sitting in his house and something wrong happened in his factory which supposed to be 100 kilometers, 500 kilometers away from his house. Even then he will be responsible. Okay. Similarly, in this condition, I mean in criminal law, if you don't have any intention, okay, even then you will be held responsible under the strict liability. Okay, so the liability is said to be strict because defendants could be convicted even though they were genuinely ignorant of one or more factors that made their acts or omission criminal. The defendants may therefore not be culpable in any real way, that is there is not even criminal negligence, the least blameworthy level of mens rea. So if some actions of such type that committed certain crime negligently, recklessness or something like that. So that is covered under this a strict liability. But at the same time you remember there what we have studied that tort law basically. So here as, as well, so you have to be something like duty of care. That is these offenses are also termed vicarious or deemed liability offenses. Example of such offenses can be found in a special acts such as Negotiable Instrument Act 1881, the Customs Act 1962 and the Information Technology Act 2000, Cybercrime and all there are so many examples you can find that but there is guilty mind as well but in certain conditions if it is not there then that will be covered under the strict liability which provide for deemed offenses by directors, responsible officers of a company, okay, in case of data theft and all, if a company has committed a contravention offense, such deemed liability disregards whether there was actually any mens rea or not on the part of the person concerned. So it is very much similar to the same concept that we have studied while discussing the tort law and in criminal law but here the criminal charge will be applied and there civil charge something that is civil wrong so civil kind of treatment will be there okay now the last point of this topic that is what is difference between intention and motive the meaning of doing an act intentionally in criminal law means something that is done 
willfully and not accidentally or mistakenly. Okay. If the act which is prohibited, actus reus, is done willfully, knowingly or with awareness of the resulting consequences, then the same will cause liability in criminal law. So this is talking about the intention. So you have the knowledge of the reality that if you do this act, if you fire your pistol in a crowded area, there is possibility that it may hit someone and may take someone's life. Okay? Even then you did it. You have the knowledge. You did it willingly and in a good state of mind. So in that condition, if something wrong happened, you will be held liable. So criminal liability will arise there. Okay? Motive, on the other hand, is the ulterior objective behind doing an act. It is the driving force behind intention or commission of an act. So the criminal law doesn't take into account motive in affixing criminal liability or in determining criminal culpability. This is the reason why the criminal law doesn't care whether one has stolen a loaf of bread to feed a starving person or a stolen medicine to save someone's life as long as it is a prohibited act done knowingly. So what does it mean that, see, you try to understand, this is very good example given here. It is saying simply that if you have the knowledge, you have the intention to kill someone and to steal something. So there must be some reason to do that. As I have gave the example of A and B as A beaten B without any mistake. So in that condition, B came up with some kind of revenge or something that kind of intention arised in his mind. So that is the motive. That is the something that instigated him. What was the motive? In this case, to take revenge. If someone, as an example given here, a stealing medicine in order to save his mother's life. Okay? So, the motive behind a stealing the medicine is to save the life of his mother. Okay? So, there is something like kind of instigating factor or inspiring, motivating thing that force or compel, that forces or compels someone to do something. Okay? So that is motive. But in criminal law, but further it is explained here that in criminal law, motive is not considered as one of the elements while deciding the criminal culpability or liability or such any such offense okay and this is the reason that even someone stealing the piece of bread in order to satisfy his hunger even then the action the actus rea is considered only and his intention because it was known to him that he is stealing something and he has stolen the piece of bread. So that action mixed with the intention and knowledge is a crime. Motive that was to quench his hunger is not important. What important? That is the knowledge, intention and action. That's it. Okay. So this is all about the meaning and concept of crime. Okay. I believe you must understood the meaning, the stages of crime, the categories of crime, okay? And of course, the elements of crime that is mens rea and actus rea. And again, 
lastly the difference between intention and motive so see you in next video